Hey, welcome back everyone. In this video, we are gonna be talking about indexes. Yeah! Now we've briefly talked about indexes in this SQL Server tutorial series, but in the upcoming videos we are going to be creating these indexes, so I thought it'd be appropriate to, you know, go a little bit more in depth with these things called indexes. It's been a little while since I've made a video, so it might take me a couple seconds to get back in the rhythm of things. Also, I apologize ahead of time if I throw up because I've been sick for like a long time. But that's enough about throw up because no one really wants to talk about that. So let's get on to indexes. What is an index? Well, in databases, an index is when we tell the database we are going to use this column or a group of columns for a bunch of stuff. It improves the speed of our database. Essentially what I'm saying is that we create a column index. Now that SQL Server knows how to treat that certain column because we labeled it an index, it improves the speed of our select statements and also joins, which are part of select statements. So literally, the easiest way to think of an index is to think of a book which has an index. So an index is something usually in the back that you can look at, <laughs> and it'll tell you where they talked about certain topics. Of course, the one book I grabbed does not have an index. <laughs> Anyways, pretend that the back of this book has an index. And what that index does is it lists different topics that the book talks about and where to find those topics in the book. It works similarly in databases because we can define a column as an index and then that database knows how to grab that data quicker. Now there are two types of indexes when we are working with SQL Server. And those two index types are clustered and non-clustered. I'm going to give you a rough overview of what both of these are. That way you are prepared to make legit indexes <laughs> on your database. The essential difference between these two is how the data in the index is structured. The first one we are going to talk about is clustered. Now, I don't know about you guys, but back when I was a young lad, we had these things called phone books. And what these things do is they list phone numbers of, you know, all the people in your local town or your city. Now the way these phone books are organized is that when you look someone up, all of the information about them is right there. So let's say the phone book is organized by name. You could say that the name is a clustered index in that phone book. So in databases, clustered indexes determine the way the table is actually laid out. To better think this through, let's go through a simple table to see this. Here is the table, and we have an ID column and a name. Very simple table. Doesn't really matter if it's useful for anything. <laughs> the thing you're going to notice here is that these are ordered by an ID. So in this situation, we probably put a clustered index on the ID column. The names, on the other hand, they are in no particular order. That's because they don't have an index. So if you were to tell the database, yo, give me the dude with the ID of three. Well, it's easy. All you gotta do is go down to the ID of three. Boom, right there. But if you say something like, yo, give me the person with the name Mark. Well, now the database is going to have to go and scan through every single row to try to find Mark. So you can see that it can be much more time consuming. When the things are in some logical order, the database can find that data much quicker. Now moving on to a non-clustered index, it works very similar in that it organizes the data like this, but the actual data that's associated with it is stored somewhere else. So it kind of just tells you how to find the data. The best illustration for that is using an index in the back of a book. So let's say I look up something like joins in a database development book. It'll say joins, page 4082. <laughs> it points you to where the data that you're looking for really is. So let's say we wanted to order the first name. We could put a non-clustered index on this data and the end result would be something like this. You can see that these are in a procedural order now and if there is any other information associated with this row, for example, a last name, since this data is in order, the database can find the data much quicker. So you could say, yo, give me the person with the last name of Mark, boom, right there. Then it is easier for the database to find the data relating to Mark. And there you go, there's Mark Smith. So another way to think about it is that the non-clustered indexes organizes the data, but does it separately than the way the table is actually structured. The table is actually structured by ID here, but the database does some additional work of keeping some kind of system of ordering 
for the names. Then the database can use that system to find the data related to that name or whatever the index is on. Now indexes work the best when you're grabbing the data that is indexed. So what that means is that if you have some kind of index and you are selecting data, it'll probably be faster if you just select the columns that are part of that index. But that doesn't mean you have to do it that way. And generally indexes can help with a lot of things. So if you're running into the problem where your queries are slow, you'll probably want to look into adding indexes. And in fact, you should probably design your database to have indexes to begin with. So what do you want to index? I know this video is kind of running long, so I'll try to keep it simple. Essentially, you want to index anything you're going to commonly use for a select and also joins, which we will discuss joins in more detail as time goes on. So this generally includes the primary key, which by the way, anything labeled primary key is going to be a clustered index by default. So you usually do not have to worry about the primary key. The next thing you'll want to consider is any foreign keys. If you're using joins and you're joining foreign keys to primary keys, you'll probably want to make a non-clustered index on those foreign keys. Lastly, the third type of thing you're going to want to index is any other columns you are continually selecting. So if you have some website that continually selects the same data and over and over and over again, you might want to consider adding an index on there and seeing if it improves the speed any. The last thing you guys need to know is that you can only have one clustered index. Only one. And why does that make sense? It makes sense because this determines the table structure. You can't have the table structured in one order and also in a different order. Only one index can determine the order. You can have as many non-clustered indexes as you want. I mean, there's a limit, but <laughs> in general, the number of non-clustered indexes is not a concern. The only concern you might want to have is that the more indexes you have, the slower the database becomes. That's because anytime you update data or insert data, it's got to update it in all of the indexes. So for example, let's say Mark changes his name to Mark with a C. Well now, this has to be updated in all of the indexes referencing that column. So there's a good balance. And obviously this is a lot of information for one video, so we can't cover it all. But this is a pretty good overview, and in the next videos we'll be creating indexes in SQL Server. So thanks guys for watching, and if you like these videos, please be sure to click like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys.